Hi, this is Maro, and today we will be discussing a new concept which is exponential functions. Through this video, we will discuss the meaning of exponential growth and decay. We will notice what is the growth factor, how do we find the y-intercept of an exponential function, and its range and its domain. So let's start with our first slide. Now, we have here two models of exponential functions. One of them, the first one here, is an exponential growth and the second one is an exponential decay so this one here represents an exponential growth and this represents an exponential decay now what do you mean by that now the function which represents exponential growth has the values of y equal 2 to the power of x now in the exponential function the exponent x is the variable or is the unknown now, if I want to see what is the values of y with very different values of x, I'm just going to substitute. So if I have y equal, now if I substitute for x equal negative 1, then y 2 to the power of negative 1 is going to be a half, 1 over 2. If I substitute for x equals 0, then my answer is going to be 1. If I substitute for x equal 1 then my answer is going to be 2 if i substitute for x equal 2 my answer is going to be 4 and if i substitute for x equal 3 your answer is going to be 8. now why are we doing this i want you to see what exponential functions show now when i substituted what points did i get when x was equal to negative 1 y was equal to half then when x was equal to 0 y was equal to 1 when x was equal to 1, y was equal to 2. And when x was 2, y was 4. And when x was 3, y was 8. If you try to graph these points, you will find that x equal negative 1, y was equal to half. This is the first point. Then at 0, it's equal to 1. At 1, it was equal to 2. And at 2, it was equal to 4. And at 3, it was equal to 8. It's not going to show here. So this is what gives you the graph. As you can see, the values of y increase as the values of x increase. So what it shows here is what we call a growth. So the graph, the values of y are growing. They grow rapidly when it comes to an exponential function because this is 3 and 8. Well, 4 is going to be 4 and 16, then 5 and 32. The difference between each value of y and the one before it gets bigger as the values of x increase so this represents an exponential growth okay now why does this represent an exponential growth because here the base which is 2 was greater than 1 let's see what do i mean by that now if i have an exponential decay what do we mean by that well let's see what an exponential decay here the values i have is half to the power of x so if I have half to the power of x, well, I'm going to write it another way. And I want to substitute with the same values of x I did for the other function. Let's say I have half to the power of negative 1. Well, what will happen to it? It will flip, right? So your answer will be 2. Then if I have half to the power of 0, well, my answer is going to be 1. When I have half the power of 1 my answer is going to be half then when we have half to the power of 2 so I'm substituting with different values of x well it's going to be 1 squared over 2 squared which is 1 over 4 when we have half to the power of 3 so 1 to the power of 3 is 1 and 2 to the power of 3 is 8 so what are the points let's check again well, the points I have are as follows. I have when x was equal to negative 1, it was 2. x was equal to 0, y was 1. x was equal to 1, I have half. x is equal to 2, we got 1 over 4. When x was equal to 3, y was equal to 1 over 8. So as you can see here, the values of y decrease as you move on. So at negative 1, y was equal to 2, this one. At 0, it was equal to 1. At 1, it was equal to half. At 2, it's equal to 1 over 4. At 3, 1 over 8, and so on. So the values of y decrease as the values of x increase. This is why we call it a decay. 
Why is that a decay? Because the base here is half, which is between 0 and 1. So we have seen two graphs of functions. One of them is represents an exponential growth, and the other represents an exponential decay. And we saw how do we get those graphs, actually, just by substituting for different values of x. From that, we can actually find a rule that we can use. So let's look at what rule we have here. Now, the rule says, if the, for the function y equal a b of x, now take care, b here is the base of the function. We had two values, so this is the value of b for this function. This is the value of b for this function. So b here is the base that has an exponent x. So for y equal a b to the power of x, a is another constant multiplied by it. We didn't see it here. We will see it in future questions. Now, if a is greater than 0, so this number here is greater than 0, and b is greater than 1, like what? Like here, like 2. Like in this case, the function represents exponential growth. So if the number that has a power of x is greater than 1, then this is an exponential growth, definitely, even if it's not graphed, okay? Now, if a is greater than 0, again, and b is less, and uh, sorry, b is between 0 and 1, so b is less than 1, but greater than 0. So it's either a decimal or a fraction, but it's not negative. Not negative, take care, okay? So it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Then what happens? Like the half we had here, it shows the function represents exponential decay. Okay? Now, there are a couple of rules that I want to explain to you before we go further. Now, in the case of an exponential function, b here is what we call the base of the function, is always greater than 0. Okay? We don't model exponential functions by ba negative bases. The base is never negative. Why the base is never negative? Because it won't show the model you want to look for. e to the power of 1 is going to be negative 3. When you have negative 3 to the power of 2, it's going to be 9. And then negative 3 to the power of 3, then it's going to be negative 27. Well, negative 3 to the power of 4, what will happen? As you can see here, you'll get to 81. So as you can see, the values of y will be negative, positive, negative, positive. So that does not represent an exponential model at all. It does not show growth or shows decay. It doesn't show neither. So by all means, the value of b is never negative. It's always positive. Because if it's negative, it won't show you a continuous graph of growth or decay. So as we said, the value of b is always greater than 0 if we want to represent an exponential function. Okay, so it's always going to be greater than 0. So it's not going to be negative ever. Okay, what else do I know about the base of the function? I know that the base of the function, although it's greater than 0, it's never going to be 1. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if I have a base, that base, although I know it's greater than 0, it cannot be 1. Why not? Well, let's try. If I have 1 to the power of 1, your answer is 1. 1 to the power of 2, your answer is also 1. 1 to the power of 3, your answer is also 1. So if I want to graph this function, it won't give you a model of exponential growth or decay. What will give you is going to be a constant function, a straight line. So if I want to graph it, like this is the x um, the x axis and the y axis, it will look like that. The values of y are always 1. So this also does not model an exponential growth or decay. So we have agreed on two things now, that b is always greater than 0, and also b does not equal to 1. Okay? So we have two cases after that. When b is between 0 and 1, which is this case, b is between 0 and 1, well, this is an exponential decay, when you have a decimal or a fraction. When b is greater than 1, until infinity, it doesn't matter what is the value of b then, then it represents exponential growth. Okay? Now, other than that, in both cases, what do we know? The y-intercept, which is the point where the graph will intersect with the y-axis, is 0 and a. Well, look here. This is the point. What is it? It's 0 and 1. Why is that 0 and 1? Because this function, y, equals 1 multiplied by half to the power of x. This is the value of a. This is the value of b. So if a is not written, you don't have a value here. You can see it. It's 1. 
So if it's 1, then the y-intercept is 0 and 1. Well, it's the exact same thing here. This is y equals 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of x. A is the constant that's alone, and B is the base that has the exponent x. And A here will help you to find the y-intercept, which is the point where the graph will intersect the y-axis. Okay, the domain in both cases, either growth or decay, is all real numbers. You have values that represent x from negative infinity until infinity for the domain. The asymptote is y equals 0. What do you mean by an asymptote? As an asymptote is an imaginary line that kind of makes a, um, a border for the function. So the function doesn't go, doesn't cross that asymptote. They say it's y equals 0. Well, y equals 0 is the x-axis. On the x-axis, all values of y are equal to 0. So this is the line. Now, no matter how small the value of the exponent is, this value, the value of y, will always be positive. Because the base is positive, like 2 to the power of negative 3 was 1 over 8 to the power of negative anything is going to keep getting smaller, but it will never become negative. The value of y will never become negative. Because the value of y never become negative, it does not cross the x-axis. In this case, we, we say that the x-axis is an asymptote, like it stops the um, graph from crossing it. Okay, so we call it an asymptote, which is y equal to zero. And it's the case, it's the same case for both the growth and the decay. Also, the range in both cases for the growth and the decay, if the function, and that's in case the function doesn't um, experience any kind of transformation, and we will discuss transformation later, then the range is y greater than zero, then all the values of y are positive as we said a minute ago. So domain. And we had um, a video about domain and range that discussed all types of functions but did not ex discuss exponential functions. So you can add this to these. I will link it here for you so you can look at it. The domain is from uh, negative infinity, sorry, to infinity. And the range is going to be from 0 until infinity. And 0 is not included because it does not come to 0. Now, what kinds of questions you could see without a graph that relate to the rule we have just discussed? Let's look here. Now, this is the rule we have just discussed. If I, we are asked to identify each function or situation as an example of exponential growth or decay, and what is the y-intercept? Well, as we said, this is y equal a b to the power of x, right? The value of a is 3, and the value of b is 4. Now, if the value of b is 4 and b is greater than 1, then this is definitely an exponential growth. As we said, we said that if the value of b is greater than 1, then this is exponential growth. If the value of a is 3, then the y-intercept is 0 and 3. So value of a will help you to find the y-intercept. Value of b will tell you whether it's a growth or decay. Now, what about this question? I can tell that a is 11, the constant that does not have an exponent, this is a, and b is 0 0.75, well, b is the base with the exponent x. Now, a can tell us that the y-intercept, as we said a minute ago, is 0 and 11, and b can tell us that this is an exponential decay. Now, we will stop here, and I hope this has been helpful for you. We have discussed or we have explained what does it mean in exponential growth, what does it mean in exponential decay, how the function will look like. We discussed the rule, the base, how does it affect the growth or decay. We discussed why the base cannot be negative, and we also discussed why the base cannot be equal to 1. We have seen what is the y-intercept of an exponential function, how to find it, and the domain and the range in the case we don't have any transformation. I hope this has been helpful for you and thank you so much for watching.